Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. For today's look, I am doing this champagne gold bridal tutorial for you guys. I'm first starting off by going in with the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Toner on a cotton pad. This step is very essential to me in the makeup application process. It not only removes any excess makeup that might be left over from the night before, but it also does remove any excess oils if they are left on the face. My client for this application was a little bit drier, so this is mainly to kind of lightly exfoliate the face. I also love the rose element inside of this toner as well because it does calm down any irritation inside of the skin and just kind of soothe it out a little bit in case people are a little bit more dry. Next, I'm going in with my Sonia Roselli Water Elixir. As you guys may know, Sonia Roselli's skincare line has easily become my top pick for makeup applications. I love the Water Elixir because it's kind of a combination of a serum and an essence in one. It provides a lot of hydration to the skin, and it also almost provides a sticky base for makeup to sit on top of. As far as the application method for this product, you want to apply it on clean hands. Probably about four or five pumps, I would say, would do the trick. Rub it around in your palms for a little bit, and then you almost want to start pressing it into the skin and just rubbing it around just to make sure that it's fully absorbed. Next, I'm taking the Sonia Roselli Water Oil, and this is exactly what it sounds like. It's a water and oil mixture. You do have to shake the two together just because oil and water, of course, separate. I am taking about three drops of this onto the palms of my hands, rubbing it around in the areas that I feel like are especially dry. She did have dry texture around mostly her cheek area, I would say, so I'm trying to just concentrate it mostly on those areas. There's a little bit of dryness on her forehead as well, so I'm just making sure that that product is fully absorbed in the places that I need it. Next, I'm going in with the Embryo Lease Light Cream Concentrate. It is just a lightweight cream moisturizer, and it also has some priming properties as well. It sits really beautifully underneath makeup. This is my all-time favorite moisturizer for drier skin. Next, I'm going in with the Anastasia Brow Duo in the shade Soft Brown. I'm just trying to more so create a shape for her brows. There's just some sparse areas that I wanted to get filled in. As you can tell, I'm starting off by going near the front of her brows first. I'm using upward strokes because that is the direction that the brow hairs usually lay in the front. Then I'm going in and filling in the bottoms of the brows and also the tops as well. Then just concentrating on the middle and just getting everything filled in. Now I'm taking the P. Louise base and this is in the shade 2.5. I usually go about about one to two shades lighter than the person's skin tone just to be able to lighten up the eyes a little bit. The P. Louise base is a cream product. It's a little bit thicker than a normal concealer. I personally love it because it not only makes the eyeshadows appear a lot more vibrant, but it also makes sure they hold on a lot longer because of the base of it. I also like it because it cancels out any discoloration on the eyelids in case somebody has a little bit of redness or if they have some veins that are happening as well. I'm taking the P. Louise base on a concealer brush. I'm using this to carve up underneath the eyebrows just to kind of create more of a shape and then all over the eyelids. Now I'm taking a fluffy brush that is completely clean of product and just wiping it over the base. This removes any excess product just so there won't be any creasing going on. You do also want to make sure you apply the eyeshadows directly to this base and not set it with powder. It works best that way. Now I'm going in with the Viseart Dark Mattes Eyeshadow Palette and I'm just taking this brown shade in the top left hand corner. I'm using this as a light transition color just right on the outer third of her eye and just up above her crease a little bit. Now I'm going in with the MAC eyeshadow single in the shade Espresso. This is just a deeper medium tone brown. It's a little bit more neutral in tone and I'm just using that right on the outer thirds just kind of blending out almost. I was trying to create a more elongated effect on the outer corners more of a cat eye foxy eye kind of shape whatever you want to call it and just deepening that up. Now I'm going in with the glitter on the eyelids. I'm just taking the Anastasia Loose Pigment in Sand. I was trying to create more of an ombre effect, so I put a more mid-tone bronzy shade right in the center of the lid, and then I wanted to transition it out into a brighter, lighter color. So I then took the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow on my fingers because I felt like it had a lot more pigmentation that way. This ColourPop Shadow is in the shade Fine Pearl, and I'm just making sure to blend it together with the ABH Sand Pigment just so they nice transition together. 
Then lastly, for the bright inner corner, I'm just taking the Anastasia Loose Pigment in the shade Crystal. And here is where I realized that my camera was not recording any longer, so I took the MAC eyeshadow in the shade Brune. I decided to create a soft wing liner just using that darker brown eyeshadow. Then here I'm just measuring the lashes to make sure that I cut them to the right length. Now I'm going in with the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Waterproof Mascara on a disposable applicator. Also, just a trick that I've learned over time, if you guys notice, I have my pinky on her eyelid on purpose. I'm not only using that to lift up her eyelids, but also it kind of works as a mascara guard as well, so I won't get any mascara on the top of her eyelid. Once the lash glue has dried down for a little bit, probably after about 30 seconds to 40 seconds, I would say, the lashes are ready to be applied. To prevent the awful mess of glue getting places that it shouldn't or gluing your client's eyes shut, the easiest method that I found is having your clients look down, but just not closing their eyes all the way, and that's exactly what you can tell them. I use a lash applicator, stick it down to the middle of the lid first, and then just secure it on the ends. You don't have to use a lash applicator, I just find it easiest, and then I'm just using my hands to secure everything in place. I decided to go in with the Engla AMC Gel Liner in the shade 77, and that is just the black gel liner. I'm just taking this and going right over the lash band just to make sure it hides a little bit more. Since we just had a dark brown shadow before, I just felt like it needed to blend in a little bit. Now I'm going in with the Face Atelier Ultra Pro Foundation in the shade 2. As you can tell, this looks like it's a lot lighter on her face than it should be, but this foundation does slightly oxidize, which means it gets a little bit darker as it sits on the skin. So I'm just taking my Beauty 360 sponge and it is damp just to let you guys know. In case you guys don't know, the Face Atelier foundation literally is my all-time favorite foundation that I've ever found for my makeup kit. It's so great. It's about a medium to full coverage. It's pretty natural looking. It's a silicone base, which means that it fills in any fine lines and wrinkles and it also adheres and lasts a super long time on the face. I literally call it my airbrush foundation in a liquid form because of the longevity of it and the fact that it just looks so pretty and so flat flawless on the skin. If you guys notice, I have more of a unique application method. I usually use a concealer brush, draw on the foundation first on a person's face, and then use the sponge to blend it out afterwards. By doing this technique, it gives me more control over placement and also how much coverage I want in a certain area. Whenever I've personally gone in directly with a sponge or a brush, I always feel like I'm super heavy handed or product just gets concentrated in one area and just looks very heavy. So even though my method is a little bit more time consuming than normal, I feel like it's well worth it. Next, I'm going in with the Too Faced Multi-Use Concealer in the shade Porcelain, and I'm just using that with the same concealer brush. My goal was to brighten up the center of her face a little bit more, so I used a concealer that was about two shades lighter than her complexion. I took it right down the center of her face, so forehead, nose, right on the sides of the nose as well, where we tend to get a little bit of redness as females, on the chin, and then I went right underneath the eyes. I did notice, however, that when I put it underneath the eyes, it was a little bit too light, so I went in with a little bit of a deeper concealer shade and that's what you see me applying now. So I went ahead and just dotted it underneath the eyes. As you are underneath the eyes as well, just make sure that you pull back every once in a while and let your clients blink every now and then just so their eyes don't start watering. You always want to be very, very gentle underneath the eyes. Now this is where my footage cut off again, but all I did is just take the one size translucent powder and just set it right underneath her eyes and down the center of her face. Now I'm taking the Patrick Ta She Sculpted contour duo in the cream shade and I'm just taking that all around the perimeters of her face especially on her cheeks and just bronzing her up a little bit. Next I'm setting it in place with the Huda Beauty glowish bronzing powder in the shade medium with a powder brush and just kind of going right over top of where I place the cream contour. As I said before it not only sets it but it also kind of deepens up the contour a little bit and gives some warmth to the complexion. Next I'm taking the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Mood Exposure. It's just a deeper mauve sort of shade. I am going very lightly with it with the same powder brush as before. Then I'm using my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Soft and Gentle. This is honestly my go-to powder highlighter for any sort of bridal look and any look in general. It's very complementary to a lot of different skin tones, anywhere from very fair all the way up to a medium skin tone, I feel like. So I'm taking it right on the cheekbones, on the temples, right down the 
center of the face, so on the nose, also on the cupid's bow and on the chin as well. Now I'm just finishing up underneath the lower lash line. I'm taking a very thin brush underneath and I'm taking MAC Espresso. I like using darker brown shades like this in replace of eyeliners on the lower lash line just because they tend to not transfer as much. And I like duplicating the colors that I used on the top of the eyes on the bottom of the lid. Then I'm taking the same shade that I used on the top in the Viseart Dark Mattes palette and I'm just using a little tiny smudger brush to smudge out and diffuse the darker brown shadow that I put down. Then I'm just finishing off the lower lash line by putting on some waterproof mascara on the bottom with a little tiny disposable. The disposables that I like using on the bottom are actually brow spoolies. They're especially great for people who have shorter bottom lashes. You can just get a little bit more precise with it. For lips, I'm starting out with the Gerard Cosmetics Lip Liner in Sugar and Spice. It's a warm tone nude shade and I felt like it was very appropriate since this whole entire thing is a very warm toned look. I love these pencils because they are so, so creamy. They go on really smooth and don't dry out the lips, which is fantastic. Now I'm going in with a lipstick that is literally one of my all-time favorites now and I don't know why I did not jump on the bandwagon earlier. This is the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk. I feel like it came out a little bit more warm toned on camera than it is in person. It has a little bit more of a peachy pink kind of base to it, but it's very complimentary for a lot of different skin tones and I'm absolutely loving it. I've been doing this concealer trick on the lips recently where you just put some concealer right in the middle of the lips. It almost kind of acts like a lighter tone nude lipstick and then you just want to pat it out with the same lip brush or applicator that you use to put on the lipstick. It just creates that nice bright contrast in the middle of the lips, almost like you put on a very nude toned lipstick and creates a lot of fullness to the lips. Then I'm just topping it off with the Lancome Juicy Tubes in the shade Clear. You don't need to carry around all the shades of lip glosses, just carry around a clear lip gloss and you can use any lipstick to mix with it. I've definitely been a sucker for a really juicy looking lip recently. The last step is just locking everything into place with my Scandinavia Bridal Makeup Setting Spray and that is about it guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys have any questions or anything, definitely let me know. All the products will be linked in the description bar down below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.